this this video is going to be over today's price action September the 2nd I'm gonna to try to be more consistent with videos and go back and make videos on the prior so coming into the day as everybody knows we're all-time highs and let me see here something I wanted to point out Hmm. Uh, I must have been looking at it. I thought this. Was, I thought we've had consecutive closes for a while. I must have been looking at something different. But either way, Al pointed it out the other day. Everybody knows that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven consecutive bull closes is probably going to have a bear close at a minimum. And I wouldn't be surprised if we go outside down. I just wouldn't surprise me one bit. Daily chart, tight channel. But again, I think we're going to sell off somewhere down here. Weekly chart, kind of like the monthly chart, I think we're gonna go outside down and touch the moving average. More importantly, five minute chart. Uh, one thing I'm gonna start discussing, and I'm still trying to, you know, this is nothing that Al has not discussed, it's all from him. I'm just trying to think of how to put it in different words. And that is uh, kind of a decision tree thought process, so, at any moment, you two things are you in a, are you in a bull trend or a bear trend? And if you're there, we go. Sorry, I had to adjust a few things. If you're in a bull trend, well, let me start over. At any moment, if you're looking to do something, ask yourself: if You're in a bull trend or a trading range. If it, let me pause for a moment. So, a decision tree. Make this real simple. It's a trend or a trading range. You should ask yourself those two things in a given moment. So right here, is this a trend or a trading range? Well, you could argue it's trend from the open, but I think it's more of a trading range. Therefore, what are my choices? Well, it's either a broad trading range or a tight trading range. We don't know that yet. But if it's either way, I wanna buy somewhere in the bottom third, sell in the upper third, don't do anything in the middle. That's my whole game plan. If it's a trend, such as this, is this, you know, right here. Are we in a bull trend or are we in a trend or a trading range? Well, clearly we're in a trend. Is it a bull trend or bear trend? It's a bull trend. Well, is it a breakout or a channel? Well, it could be a channel, but this is pretty tight, probably a breakout, probably at least you go sideways. Therefore, I want to swing a good portion of my position, and stop down here and just wait. Well, okay, are we in a Trend or a trading range? Yeah, probably forming a trading range, but you know, again, I'd rather look to buy than sell. Sell so by pullbacks, and I'll use a wider stop. And you maybe you scale in, maybe you start scalping, where you stop swing trading so much because you expect this. Therefore, what do you do? You buy, scalp out, buy lower. You know, maybe you buy this low, maybe you buy this low down here, and maybe you scale in, and then you scalp out. So that's the decision tree thought process. Uh, I'll talk more about that. I'm, I'm still kind of, that would take me a long, I don't want to make this video too long, so that, that'll that be another video. Coming into the day, gap up, and, you know, again, where we are with the, on the daily charts, weekly charts, I am expecting a sell-off. However, at this moment, it's a gap up, bar one. What are my choices? Well, you could, I'm not going to buy so that means I'm not going to sell. And I'm not going to buy because I think it's a trading range. And I don't want to buy when I think we're going to pull back. But if I sell, you may have to scale in. So, you you know, what's a wide stop? Is it is it wider than, let me adjust something. I was playing around with something earlier. Yeah, I'll keep that on. There we go. So what's wide? Is it? Measure move up, maybe, but look what happened. You got stopped out only for it to sell off. So you would need a wide stop, but either way, it's a gap up, arguably always in long. I think we're going to be in a trading range, so I'm not interested in buying up here. I am interested in selling. And when I see this, I'm thinking, okay, this could be a trading range. I think we're going to fall below bar one. I look to sell. And a lot of traders, it's three pushes one push, pullback, two push, pullback, three pushes, it's a wedge breakout of a channel, so it's parabolic, whatever you want to call it, and traders will just start selling closes. The problem with the trading range, and this is what makes it difficult, kind of like this day, is you have to anticipate things. Going above bar one, traders sell, and when it starts going down, 
they start taking profits. Over here, they expected price to test these highs out on this bar and sell off. Well, what happened? You didn't have a chance to sell below the bar. It was too late. So a lot of traders, they just start selling and they'll use a really wide stop, maybe somewhere up here. And, you know, they'll allow the market time. Uh, another thing I'll talk more about soon is probabilities, risk reward. Uh, most people, it's very easy when you're looking at this to not think in terms of probabilities and risk reward and that, that will hurt you. So anyways, three cons four consecutive bulls up and again, I'll, I'll talk more about probabilities, binary decisions soon. Um, but again, I wanna try to keep this video structured. So four consecutive bull bars, odds are, you know, is it the low of the day? Probably not. Is it strong enough for a second leg up? Maybe, but I think a lot of traders are gonna be selling, betting that the bulls are gonna be disappointed and we're gonna fall below obvious support, which is yesterday's high. Why? Because I think we're in a trading range and trading ranges fall below obvious support and they go above obvious resistance. And there you go. So we're trying to form a double bottom, but it's a terrible signal bar. It's disappointing for the bears. So it makes the bears question that maybe we have to test up, you know, the close of this bar, who knows? And then we get a big outside down bar. Basically it's not quiet, but three consecutive bear bars, odds are we're gonna go a little bit more sideways. However, bulls were disappointed going up or at support. So you have to wonder if this is just an obvious sell vacuum test of support. And if we're gonna find buyers down here, you know, if you look, we, we have not had, you know, big bear bar. So let's see what the follow through looks like. Tail, disappointing, tail, disappointing, tails going up, disappointing for the bulls. What are we gonna get? And then we get a bull bar. It's subtle, but it's, it's a little bit of a hint that, you know, where's the consecutive bear bars? We're not getting them. And then we get a second leg down. Is it a second leg trap? Probably not. I think we're gonna have to go sideways, at least get some moving average. But there are plenty of traders who will look at this and say, it's sell to close, I'm disappointed, I'm gonna get out of break even. And now they're out of break even. So that's a little bit of a, a subtlety that we may rally. And you can try to, you know, maybe we're forming a low one short, but it's at the moving average at the support level. I think we're going lower, but again, I'm also expecting trading range. And, you know, it'd be, I'd, I'd really be tempted to get out of shorts if I was short. I'd rather sell up here, betting on an overall trading range and take profits down here. I don't necessarily want to buy because of the strength of this, but, you know, again, I'd rather sell a pullback or see a stronger breakout. Big bull bar. Do you buy it? Well, you can, but the problem again is, I keep forgetting to do this. There we go. You can, I'll just turn off the second one for now. I don't really need it. There we go. You could, you could buy it, but it's again, it's getting close to the upper portion of the middle portion of this leg. This could be strong enough where you get a second leg down and we could be in a bear channel. So we have a lower low. All we need is a lower high and another lower low and a lower high and another lower low. So I'd be hesitant to buy above this bar and we get follow through bar. Do you buy here? Well, you can, but again, it's even worse now because now you're at 50%. So, and you're probably gonna find profit taking up here. Bulls are buying down here, scalping out. Bears, they didn't wanna sell. They didn't wanna sell here, but they may be very interested in selling up here, betting on a one-to-one -one score or maybe two or three times your risk. So, we're pausing, disappointed bears. What happened here? Well, bears, here's a breakout point, we broke above it, here's a breakout point, broke above it. And just as we broke above this breakout point and failed, a lot of bull, a lot of bears assume that this breakout point will fail. So if I sell this breakout point and scale in, I'll get out of break even. Other bulls, they know it's going to fail, so they'll scalp out and they'll look to buy somewhere around the breakout point for a scalp. And there we go. So is this a second leg trap? Is it wedge? One, two, three, double top with here, test of the high close? Yes. Is it strong enough to get a strong sell off? Maybe, but probably not. And it's a big tail, so if you're selling, stop above. You have to understand they'll probably get stopped out. Three consecutive bear bars. Uh, 
Is it always in short? I don't think so. You've had big up, big down, big up, near the moving average, can't get below the moving average. Support, some bulls will see it as some sort of, you can call it pullback to support. I just call it a try trading range. Uh, I wouldn't try and get too fancy with what you're trying to call it. It's a tight trading range. Bears are selling above bars, bulls are selling below bars. You know, I want to see this bar and another big bar. I don't want to see traders trying to buy 50% of this rally and bears selling these highs and scaling in. I want to see somebody trapped. You know, I want to see, I'm going to go back to this day. I want to see this. That's what I want to see. All right, where were we? So three consecutive bear bars, uh, have one buy, but again, tight trading range. Uh, another thing you have to think about is a market's designed to make traders trade. It's efficient. It wants to keep things in the middle. Rather than explain all that, there's Al's video of course, he talks about that terminology, you know, the goal of the market, it's in his books. I'm just gonna assume you guys, have, anyone understands that. Big bear bar at the moving average. Is it always in short? No, it's a double bottom with this. And I'm, again, I'm expecting disappointment. I wanna see the breakout. Uh, and then big, big bull bar, do you buy? Uh, you can, it's a, you know, some sort of major trend reversal. It's a head and shoulders bottom. It's a double top, whatever you wanna call it. It's still in the middle of tight trading range. So if I did buy above this bar, you know, I'm, I'd be tempted to buy here at the moving average. It's tested support, pulling back. But if I did, I'd be really quick to get out and I'd be expecting some sort of disappointment. So great bull bar, but we're at obvious resistance. So you have to wonder, just like this was a sell back into support, is this a buy back into resistance and two legs up? So nested two legs for the first leg, pull back second leg, or leg one, pull back leg two, which could be a second leg trap. Disappointment, high one buy at obvious resistance. Double top here, call them double top here. I'd be leery, and I honestly, I'd just, I'd probably just get out. I don't want to be long in this scenario. If I was long, I want to see this, and then I want to see another big bull bar. I don't want to see hesitation and resistance because that lowers the probability. Therefore, and it tells me that more traders are scalping. Therefore, I don't want to be in. Second entry short. If I if I was long, I'd get out below the bar and wait outside up. Another good point, even though it didn't trigger, very often when you get a small signal bar, you'll trigger it and go up or, you know, if you're a front running, price will go above the bar and turn down, go outside down. So that stops out a lot of weak traders and that's more trading range mentality. So high two buy, top of the trading range, just like we you know, it's kind of a nested low two short, but it didn't trigger. Low one short here, pulled back, tried to form a low two, but never triggered. Even though we didn't go above this bar, it's the same situation up here. High one, pull back, high two. So you have to wonder, it's a bull flag, but if we could get a bear breakout of a bull flag and sell off. And we're selling off. So big bear bar, testing these clothes. Now, now what, are we always in long or always in short? Well. I, would, I wouldn't really think of it that way. I would say it's a bear leg in a trading range. And I want to look to, want to, look to buy low, sell high, and scalp in the middle. So I want to see the bear breakout. Doji, so bull bar, okay. So that's good, so double bottom. I'm interested in buying, but again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bar bull mi bear micro channel. Small bar, very tight channel ever since the highs of these bars. So I'd really rather have a second entry or see a you know consecutive strong bull bars. Poor entry bar. Uh, you know, again, bears were you know hesitant to sell down here, but again, that's not a good sign. I want to I want to see a strong bar. I want to see something like this, and then I'll be interested in buying. Okay, so at this point, I see a measuring gap with here, thinking that we may get a measure move down of here at a minimum, and then ultimately maybe we get a measure move down here. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. What I think is going to happen is we're going to fall below, fail, and close this gap and keep going sideways. 
second entry buy, do I want to buy above it? Well, again, why am I having to buy below, right below the moving average? And why this tail, why this tail, why this tail? One, two, three, four, five bar type trading range. Why that? Why are we hesitating right above support? You know, is why didn't we fall below support and then turn up, stopping out theoretical bulls that were long in here? Big bull bar, do you buy it? You can, and but again, it's still a six bar type trading range, expanding triangle. If you are, you have to, you know, I would take it for a swing and I want a strong breakout. And if it hesitates, I would get out and take the loss. Uh, bar, here's just a regular signal bar, but again, disappointing. Possible second leg, two legged trap, I'd get out below the bar. It's not doing what you want it to do. And Again, we're in the middle of the range, we're at the open of the day, basically the open of the day, maybe a little above it. Just get out and let it be. Big bear bar, 50% uh, test of this, but again, we're, we're not getting far above these lows, and you have to wonder if this is gonna be some sort of bear breakout, but we also close this gap here, which is important. So, bear bar, big breakout. So four consecutive bear bars, are we going lower? Yes. What are the odds that we see a bar like this? Well, I don't think it's likely, but if I was short and I saw this, I'd get out and I really would look to buy. Um, I'd rather wait for a, another bear bar and see if we can get some sort of follow through. Big bear bar, well, not big, but it's follow through, so I'd sell and put your stop here. Here, you know, arguably you could just put it here because the reality is if price goes up here, you don't want to be long and your premise has changed. It's not a breakout, it's a failed breakout. So sell, maybe stop up here. The uh, bear bar, body's getting smaller, so a little bit of a sign of disappointment. Bull bar, uh, no reason to buy, so still, in theory, always in short bears are still short. Going sideways, outside down. Another big bear bar. Uh, becoming parabolic. Uh, one thing I am aware of is we went sideways for four hours. So now we're getting a breakout. This is gonna have a lot of influence on the day. And if I'm a bear, if I'm a bull, and I saw this, maybe I was one of those traders who bought these lows. I bought every low, I bought this low, scaled in. I bought this low, scaled in. I bought you know these lows, scaled in. I bought these lows down here, scaled in. So maybe I bought all these lows, and I say, you know, during that, screw it. I'll buy these lows right here, filled. And rather than get out, I'll just say, okay, I'm gonna use a wide stop. You know, I don't know what's wide, something like that, maybe a measure move of the entire range, and then put a stop somewhere down here. And I'll scale in tranches down. So I'll buy a little bit here, buy a little bit here, buy a little bit here, and get back out. I am absolutely not advocating anyone do that because the risk can grow way too big, way too fast. But there's plenty of computers that will do that and they will space out the risk and they'll, they'll have no problem with the risk management and they'll trade small enough. And I'll get into that in a second, but outside down here, so, and then here, and then we get this bull bar and, you know, basically measure move down, went below it. And what do you notice here? Well. If you're an always in bull, if you're an always in bear, at some point you gotta get out probably above this bar, uh, certainly above that bar. And if you're one of those scaling in bears, maybe you wait for a stop entry. And that's just kind of a, by the way, that's just kind of a theoretical, you put your stop somewhere down here. Do I think that a, a true institutional trader who's buying this low, planning to scale in all the way down here, are they gonna just say, you know, oh wow, it went one take below, I need to get out. No, I think they're using, I think they're using a stop arbitrarily in terms of points. Um, you know, 40 points, 30 points, 20 points. I think it's big. And, you know, they're buying here, buying here, buying here. Um, but what their expectation is, is that they buy and they wait for a bull bar and they buy more. And better yet, they double their position, let's say, and they're confident that price will at least retrace halfway where they can avoid a loss. So, 
always in bears get out and maybe those traders buy right here and then you know big bull bar and a bear bar so let's see something if I buy right here and I buy more here that did not work but if I was to buy more here and buy twice it would work how do I know that because you just you can just calculate it if you if you bought the lows at 45.34.5 and plus 45.26 do this plus 45.26.75 about about three, four, five, two, nine point six six. That would be your break even. You would not have gotten out right here. It'd come very, very close. And either way, though, clearly it let traders out there. And we know that it came back over here. But anyways, over to here. We'll try to speed this up. Always in. You know, sub bulls will buy for a scout, but this is its trading range. I think we're gonna go sideways here and go sideways here and kind of fill the gap. And if we're lucky, I think we'll close this gap too. So we have an upper range, we have a lower range, and then we meet in the middle. Some people call this the, you know, kind of thin area. And then we'll become one very large trading range. So, if, you know, would I buy? I'd buy for a scout maybe right there couple of legs down, you know, on limit orders, I'd certainly consider buying these lows, betting that traders will be disappointed in looking for a bottom. So if some traders will buy these lows, second entry buy, some traders will buy there and bet that we rally, you know, where do we rally? Above obvious resistance here. Uh, strong enough rally, probably gonna go a little bit higher, but again, it's disappointment, strong breakout, disappointing, and some traders get out break even, other traders, they look for the pullback and they start buying. This was a little bit of a surprise, you know, wasn't super expected, but again, we did get back to the open of the day and just closed right under it. So again, it's a trend on the daily chart here. And then we get all the way back up to here. And this can happen real quick. I'm sure the volume here was uh, pretty impressive. So about, I can't read it, what is it, four, Four and a half, four and a half. Oh, that's the moving average, whoops. There we go, that makes more sense. About 20,000 contracts, uh, you know, 50, 60,000 contracts here. So not really a lot to report on the day. Whenever you, the biggest thing I would say is whenever you see this, be aware that you're gonna be seeing more disappointment. And I hope this video helps.